and welcome to this edition of Voxy Pops Community Town Hall. I'm your host, Brooke Inti, and today we'll be discussing Chester County's transition to the green phase and new concerns surrounding COVID-19. With the shift to the green phase, many businesses, including restaurants, wellness facilities, and malls, have reopened at 50% occupancy. Our beautiful downtown Phoenixville is just one of the many places that has seen a surge in patronage thanks to these lessened restrictions. However, as we will hear today from the Chief Medical Officer of the Physician Health Network, Dr. Brian Broker, this move to green does not mean that the impact of COVID has lessened. There are still significant and growing concerns from the health community in light of these changes in operations. Joining me for this discussion is physician, Phoenixville physician, Dr. Brian Broker, as well as our very own Mayor Peter Urschler. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Brooke. Glad to be here. Thanks, Thanks for having me, always, Brooke. Always a pleasure having the both of you back. So here's where I want to start. As, as you know, I'm going to show you a clip from Governor Abbott uh, of Texas that he recently released on ABC7. Um, Texas was one of the places that opened up relatively quickly. So I want to go to this video and I'm going to take your comments after we take a look at it. If I could go back and redo anything, it probably would have been to slow down the opening of bars. Uh, now seeing in the aftermath of how quickly it's, uh, the coronavirus spread in the bar setting and, and you know how a bar setting in reality just doesn't work with a pandemic. People go to bars to get close and to drink and to socialize. And, and that's the kind of thing that stokes the spread of the coronavirus. And so sure, in hindsight, uh, it may have been uh, better to have slowed the opening of the bar setting. So as you can see, Dr. Abbott is talking about hindsight, which we say is 2020. But Dr. Broker, what are your thoughts on this video and what can we learn? Well, one of the problems when business is open is do we have all the proper tools and does the public have all the proper knowledge to safely open? So when we go to a bar, we have to make sure we're still maintaining our social distance. And there's been a lot of fatigue over people staying in, people want to socialize, people need to get back to business. All of that's understandable, but if we don't do it cautiously, then we start to get the surges. Okay, so um, when I know that there was recent data out there, when you go outside, you think, listen, I'm outside, there's no chance that, you know, I'm going to potentially get somebody sick because I'm outdoors. But as I understand it, there's new data on uh, transmissions of COVID and how long that hangs in the air. Can you speak to this new data? Sure. Well, this data has been observed since the beginning, but more confirmed as more studies come out. Um, and the two different ways that a virus can spread are by droplets, which are actually small little drops of water that don't hang in the air for a long time. Or they can be by aerosols, which do hang in the air for up to several hours, as long as three hours. Now, that's more of a concern indoors. Outdoors, less of a concern because the wind is going to carry a lot of that away. But if you're still in close proximity to people and you're not wearing masks, well, then the wind doesn't have a chance to carry it away, and there's the every opportunity that you will catch the virus. Okay. All right. So uh, I know that recent, recently um, Governor Wolf's uh, put out a new order that moved the restrictions of, of we always had to wear masks when we would go into businesses, and now recently we have to wear masks in any place within Pennsylvania where you are going to be within six feet of anybody, and that is... Um, at any point in in your time outside. So what do you think about the move, Dr. Broker, what do you think about the move of Governor Wolf's office um, to make this sort of extension out into the community and outside to wear masks? Well, I think it's a response to what we've seen so far. So initially there was a big effort by the public and the government to contain the virus by shutting down the economy and asking everybody to stay home. And that worked to an extent. It did not work in our country as well as it did in, say, the European Union, for example, which we'll see on a slide coming up soon. But by getting the number of infections down, that enabled us to implement other measures to try and keep the infections from going back up. Problem is, we didn't do it very well. So now that people are tired of being indoors, they're getting the false impression from government sources that the virus somehow is changed 
and they can relax their guard, but they can't because otherwise you start to see the surges that we see on this graph. So what you're seeing here on this graph, to the left of the graph is that initial surge that we saw in April. And if you follow the dates along the bottom, you'll see it all goes all the way up to this month to July. And you can see these big surges of infections that are happening in the states in the south and the southwest of the United States, where they're opening up the economies more, people are getting out and being more social in restaurants, in bars, in gyms, and not doing the social distancing and masking that they need to keep the infections down, which is why you see the number of daily cases. This graph shows you how many people a day are getting new infections. And you'll see that it's nearly twice the amount of people getting infected today, every day, than we're getting during the initial infection in April. And it's upwards of 50,000 a day. Now this next slide, what you'll see here is the difference between the United States and the European Union. So the United States, you can see in red, got a little bit better as time went on, but now is surging again. The European Union altogether is about the same size landmass and population wise as the US. But look how they've managed to keep those infections down. About 10 times less infections a day than we're having. And how have they managed to do that? Well, that's on the next slide. So what the European Union is doing better than we are is something that I call the waiting game because really all we can do to get rid of this virus is to have a vaccine. But that's not gonna happen for several years. So until the vaccine comes, we need to get better at playing this waiting game. And there's two pieces to the waiting game. There's the government response where they're giving us tools for early detection and isolation of patients to prevent them from infecting other people. And then there's personal responsibility, which we'll get into. Now the government response contains several pieces. First, for it to work well, it needs to be organized nationally. There needs to be robust testing, contact tracing and isolation of people who are sick before they infect others. But also the public needs to be fully engaged to take action that they can do. And the government really has to be responsible to get the public engaged. Now, part of our problems have been that in the US, they've left it to the states. They haven't organized it nationally. There have been early missteps for the testing and tracing and isolation, and there's continued failures and poor leadership. And you can see that if you look at some of the nonpartisan think tanks who've written long exposés about all the details of how the mistakes have happened, such as the Brookings Institution. There's a great website called the covidexitstrategy.org where they look at state by state how we're doing on each of these and they give a grading so that you can see how we have to improve. And if you also look on our Chester County website, which is chesco.org, you can see where our Chester County officials have done a tremendous job in doing everything they can do to provide testing, contact tracing, and promote isolation of people who are sick. But the reality is, is they just can't do a complete job unless it's organized at the federal level. But then lastly, as far as engaging the public, we're failing because there are conflicting messages and there's politicization of those messages and that's causing the public to be disengaged. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're seeing so many people not social distancing and not wearing masks. And that's the problem that we're having. Yeah, so let me talk about the, the social distancing part of it. And I'll get to you in one second, Peter. And you know, Peter and I had spoke on one previous Voxypop town hall about the thing about coronavirus is, is that it is a, a, an unforeseen threat, right? It's not as if it's a storm or that brought hail, like our, just recently the other day, but it's unforeseen, so you, you can't see it, and I think that makes it hard for people to comprehend that it is actually out there. So one of the things I wanna ask you about is, you know, we, we've sort of a long, all along thought that um, asymptomatic carriers can spread this disease to others. Is there any new data that is reaff you know, either reaffirming or, or not that sign of sort of the science of COVID-19? Sure. So we're seeing that about 40% of people who get infected catch it from somebody that did not have symptoms. Now, there's two ways that a person may not have symptoms. They may be in the early phase of the infection. So for the first five to 10 days of the infection, 
you can be infectious and infect other people, but not have developed symptoms yet. So that is a big problem. And then there are people that get such minor symptoms that they never really know they have an infection. Now we're seeing this with a lot of frequency. My practice is a relatively small practice. And yet we're seeing several people a week come into our office or into the hospital and emergency room that we're asked to take care of. And we test these people routinely before we do certain procedures. And we on a regular basis are canceling surgeries and canceling procedures because the person has an infection, but they don't have symptoms. So then we're taking care of the patient for the COVID, Mm -hmm. waiting to do the other work that's not emergent until the COVID is better. But we're seeing it with enough frequency that we know this is real. And we know that it's not limited to the people coming into my office who say have a sinus infection, because that has nothing to do with COVID. And so we know that the general public is going to have these asymptomatic infections as well. And here you're seeing some pictures of the boardwalk in Ocean City, just the 4th of July with no one wearing masks. Yeah, it looks it looks like an adverse that photo looked like an advertisement that you would see for come to Ocean City, New Jersey, not come when we are in the middle of a pandemic, Ocean City, New Jersey. So um, that leads me over to Peter and that, you know, the second part of of what you're telling us is it's not just the government response, but it is a personal responsibility of everyone and uh, to follow the guidelines to wear masks. So hello, Peter. Um, sorry to keep you waiting so long. Uh, so I, I know for, for those of us, you know, we, we want to talk about what Phoenixville has been doing. Um, Phoenixville recently, the, the borough council passed an ordinance which allowed the uh, Bridge Street to shut down from Thursday to Monday. And we've been doing that for, what's that, Peter, three weeks now? Is it the third week, fourth week? It was five weeks. Wow, five weeks. Okay. So, um, and I know that there had always been uh, signage to wear masks, but can you give kind of a little state of the union on how things are looking down on Bridge Street? Absolutely. And I just want to say, you know, thank you to you, to you, Brooke, to Voxipop, to Dr. Broker, because you have helped us tremendously here uh, in our community. And one of the things I think Dr. Broker highlighted, and I just really want everyone at home to, to really take a step back and think about this, but we have unfortunately been lacking uh, kind of a unified response across the country. But here in our community, because we have people like Dr. Broker, we have communication platforms like Voxipop, and we have a very uh, strong borough council. and and borough staff, we have been able to really construct, and I mean, I can't give her enough shout outs, but our Office of Emergency Management, Karen Williams, we have really constructed our own response um, in conjunction with help from um, our Chester County commissioners who have really done, like Dr. Berger said, an excellent job at managing this with our health department. And so, uh, you know, Phoenixville is one of the first communities to actually implement uh, an economic kind of stimulus program Um, As many of you may know, we have actually closed down uh, from Thursday through Sunday Bridge Street. Um, We have always asked individuals to wear masks, but we have realized more than ever that because this area is, it's not like being out on the trail, this is a more congested area. And so we've really started to push for a campaign, what we're calling Mask Up on Bridge and help keep Phoenixville open. Because at the end of the day, all you know having this closed down taking all the steps we needed to to get uh, the pieces in place to actually get the streets closed working with the businesses the plcb uh, to make sure that there are licenses that were extended properly into the streets all of that's great but unless we can make sure to manage and keep everyone healthy we will not be able to continue keeping the community open and so really uh, when we're asking people to mask up on bridge you're really helping to keep phoenixville open one of the things we've done too you can see in this picture over here right now uh, we also have distributed 10 uh, free mask stations they're being hosted by a variety of businesses on bridge and main streets you can see them clearly indicated with the sign above but then if you see at the bottom of your screen there's a box with masks there and also some hand sanitizer and please hand sanitize your hands before you reach in there to get a mask just to help keep everyone healthy okay so the response from phoenixville uh from the order looks like we've we got this mask up on bridge street campaign Uh, this is our first weekend how would you say that it's going 
What I would say is that, you know, Phoenixville is an incredible community where people truly do care about one another. And we've been very fortunate to kind of live outside of, uh, and we've been able to move some of that national distraction and that noise away from our community. Um, what I would say is that when I look in downtown at our community, most people want to do the right thing. They want to help others feel comfortable. They want to help people keep people healthy, um, et cetera. And they want to help keep Phoenixville open. Um, but one of the challenges is that when you're on the street, you're outside. And so you don't really think of it the same way you would maybe walking into a grocery store or walking into the restaurant to use the bathroom. So it's something I'm really asking all of our residents and visitors to think about is when you are on Bridge Street or Main Street or any congested area, please, please put that mask on because putting that mask on not only shows you care, but it helps keep our community open and keeps our businesses open. Yes, and I think that that's a very important note that putting masks on while it may be a, a small, minor frustration at times, allows those businesses to remain open that have been closed for so long and have been devastated economically from the shutdown. So when we want to come down there and be patrons and, and, and help these businesses, I think that wearing the masks is also another step to this. And there's really no excuse if we now have free masks uh, all throughout Bridge Street. Dr. Broker, did you want to talk to this? Uh, yes, I did. One thing I wanted to add to what Mayor Urshford had to say was that we talk about when people go to restaurants not wearing the mask while they're eating. But what I found from talking to a lot of people on Bridge Street myself and patients in my office is that they'll often go out to eat and not bring their mask with them. And what I want to emphasize is that while you may not be wearing your mask while you're eating, you still have to get to the restaurant, you still have to walk through the restaurant and the streets to get there, and you should be wearing your mask that whole time. So please always have your mask with you. And if it's appropriate to take it off, by all means, take it off. But then you'll have it at the ready to put it back on the moment you need it. And it's Brooke, you know, I have a little, uh, a little uh, kind of catchphrase that I keep using uh, specifically around it. And I say, you know, if you are standing up, mask up. So if you're not sitting at the table with your food in front of you, put your mask on. That's a good thing to remember. Stand remember, up, if you stand up, mask up. All right, I always do one last thing, gentlemen. Uh, I'll start with Dr. Broker. What is the one last thing that you want to impress upon our community as it, as it relates to this topic? The one last thing is that there are two pieces to keeping COVID at bay until we have a vaccine. The government has a response, but each of our citizens has a personal responsibility. We need to take that very seriously. Masks work. It's been shown to cut the infections down to where we need to cut them down to, but it only works if you wear them. So please always, always wear your mask. All right, Peter, what's your one last thing here? You know, like Dr. Broker said, this has really become a very localized thing. Our response here locally, not only has it worked, but you know, it is a model throughout Pennsylvania and also throughout the nation. Um, when you look at where Pennsylvania is in comparison to other states where we are currently today. Um, so I would just like to reiterate what Dr. Broker said, you know, putting your mask on, it not only shows that you care about our community, but it shows that you care about keeping our businesses open and keeping the people in our community safe and healthy. And so please keep that mask out at your uh, side. And if you are in a congested area, even if it is outside, if it's congested, please put that mask on. And if you stand up, mask up. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. That'll be this edition of Voxy Pops Community Town Hall. And as always, if you found any of the information here helpful, please share it. This is a video on demand. It can be found on voxypop.com backslash town hall or on Facebook. So thank you so for joining us. When you stand up, mask up. As Mayor Peter Urschler says, have a great day.